Welcome back, beautiful people, to another murder, murder and makeup. So before I start, I just want to say that I mean absolutely no harm to anyone that I talk about in this video, and also everything I found, I found on the internet. So let's start. Mary <clears throat> Mary Ann Cotton was born on the thirty first of October in Lowmore, Moore City, England. She's a Scorpio and also was born on Halloween. Her father was a colliery sinker. I'm not sure what that is, but it's some kind of a profession. She was born in 1832 or somewhere in that time. Her sister Margaret was born on 1834. But she only lived, only lived a couple of man, months. Her brother Robert was born in 1835. So when Mary Ann was eight, her parents moved the family to a country Durham village of Mart Martin. Martin. Mary was described by her Sunday teachers as an innocent girl of this disposition and of average intelligence. She was also very clean and tidy. So soon after the move, Mary's father fell um, 46 meters or 100 50 feet to his death in a mine shaft in February of 1842. So the family was living in a cottage which was provided by the company. But now that Michael had died, they would be kicked out because only the miners' families would live there. In 18 43, the mother married George Scott, who was also a minor. So at 60, Mary Ann left home to become a nurse at another nearby village. After all, all of the children had been sent to boarding school in Darlington over the next three years. Then she returned to her stepdad's house and, and trained as a dressmaker. In 1852, 20-year-old Mary Ann married a col colorary laborer, William Mowbray. Mowbray. They soon moved to southwest England. So Mary Ann said that the so Mary Ann said at her trial that while she was living in country Durham, five or six of her children died at a very young age, but none of the births or deaths were recorded. So we don't know for sure, but there was one birth recorded which was the daughter's Margaret James, who was born in 1863. So William and Marianne moved back to North East England, where William worked as a fireman. Another daughter, called Isabella, was born in 18... was born in 18... 58. Unfortunately, Mary Margaret Jane died in 1860. Then another daughter, also named Margaret Jane, was born in 1861. And then a son, John L Robert. Robert William, who was born in 1803, but died the next year from gastric fever. 
then William died of an intestinal disorder in 1865. So the lives of William and the children were insured, insured. and Mary collected the payout of 35 pounds on William's death, which is now um, 300 three thousand five hundred sixty pounds in two thousand one in twenty one two thousand twenty one <laughs> and two pounds and five pennies I think on John Robert Williams death. So soon after Williams death Mary Ann moved to um she Seaham Harbour which was in country Durham, county Durham, where she met and started dating Joseph Natras. During this time, the second Mar Mar Margaret Jane, who was three and a half, died from typ typhus fever, leaving Mary Ann with only one child left. So Mary Ann went to work in House of House of Recovery for the Cure of Contagious Fever and sent her uh, only child Isabella to live with her mother. So Isabella's grandmother. So one of her patients at the um, House of Cure or something like that she worked at was a George Ward, who was an engineer. They got married in the 28th of August, 1865. So um, George continued to suffer from an illness and died on the 20th of October, 1866. After a long illness, which was characterized by paralysis, paralysis, you know, when you are paralyzed, <laughs> and intestinal problem problems, so once again Mary Ann collected some insurance money from her husband's death. So then, Mary Ann met Joseph Robinson, who was a sick shipwright and whose wife had just died. He hired Mary as a housekeeper in 1866 and a month later James's baby died of gastric fever. He turned to Mary for comfort and Mary became pregnant. So Mary Ann's mother became ill with hepatitis so Mary Ann immediately went to her. So her mom became uh, became to recover, but she started complaining about stomach pains. She, she died at the age of 50, 54 in the spring of 1867 which was nine days after Mary Ann arrived, arrived at her. So Mary Ann's daughter Isabella was brought back with Mary Ann to Robinson's place. And soon, soon she developed stomach pains and died also. And so did James's two children, Elizabeth and James. All three kids were per buried in the last, last week of April and the first week of May 1867 and Marianne got £5 for Isabella's death from the insurance company. So James and Marianne got married in the 11th of August 1867. So their second child, George, 
was born on 18th of June 1869. So James became a little suspicious because Marianne was taking life insurance policies on him and he also found out that Marianne had been telling the kids to uh, sell some random items around the house so and also she had stolen uh, 50 pounds from him so he obviously didn't like that and threw Marianne out of the house so now Marianne is on the streets until her friend Margaret Cotton introduced Marianne to her brother Fred Frederick, Frederick, who had lost four of his children, lost two of his four children. So Margaret had acted as a substitute for the children, Frederick Jr. and Charles, but she had died in March 1870 from stomach alignment. And this left Marianne and Frederick grieving. And soon her twelfth pregnancy was on the way, or started her twelfth pregnancy. <laughs> so Marianne and Frederick married in 17th of September 1870, and their son Robert was born in 1871. So soon after Mary learned that her former lover, Joseph Navarat, lived um, about 50 kilometers away or 30 miles and he was no longer married. She rekindled the romance and moved her more, new family closer to him. Frederick died in December of that year from gastric fever. There seems to be a pattern here. Mary got the insurance from his death. So soon after Frederick's death, Joseph became Mary Ann's lodger. She gained employment as a nurse to an officer who was covering from smallpox. So Richard Quickman was Probably Mary Ann's lover, and soon Mary Ann was on her 13th pregnancy. <laughs> so Frederick Jr. died in March of 1872, and soon Robert also died. And then Joseph became ill with gastric fever and died just after revising his will in Mary Ann's favor. So one day when she was at her job nurse nursing people to help or something like that <laughs> she was asked to care for this one a woman who was recovering from smallpox the small smallpox but she complained that the last child she had with Frederick Cotton was in the way and when the person who asks, asked her to help the lady said that why don't you just put him in a workhouse uh, then she replied that I won't be troubled along he'll go like the rest of the Cottons and just five days later Mary Ann told the person who asked her to help that, that the boy Edward was dead. So the person who was Riley who asked for the help went to the town police and convinced the doctor to delay writing of the death certificate until the investigations were done. So Marianne's first vis visit after her son's death was the insurance where she discovered that no money will be paid for her until the death certificate was is issued. An inquest was held and the jury returned with 
a verdict of natural causes. Marianne claimed that the that she used arrowroot to help his illness. Then a local newspaper latched onto the story and discovered that Marianne had moved around northern England and lost three husbands and eleven children, also a lover, a friend and a mother, and they all died died of stomach fevers. Dr. William Kilburn, who attended the child, Charles, had get, kept some kind of samples and tested them and the test showed arsenic. He told the police who arrested Mary Ann and the prosecutor exhumation of Charles's body. She was charged with murder and although the trial, trial was delayed until after a delivery on the 10th of January 1873 of her 13th and final child, whom she named Margaret Edith Quickmanning Cotton. So Mary Ann's trial began on the 5th of March 1873. So the delay caused some problems with, with selecting the prosecuting counsel. So the defense in this case was handled by Mr. Thomas Campbell Foster, who argued dur during the trial that Charles had died from inhaling arsenic arsenic, which was used as a dye in the cream wallpaper in Marianne's house. The jury retired with a for 90 minutes before returning with a guilty verdict. Several petitions were presented to the home security, but to no avail. Marianne Cotton was hanged in the Durham County Gaul in on 24th of March 1873 by William Carlcraft. She died not from her neck, neck breaking but by strangulation which was caused by the rope being rigged too short, possibly on purpose, because it would be a quick and easy painless death if her neck has, had broken, but maybe the hanger decided that she didn't deserve that because she watched her uh, family members and friends die a slow and painful death. So maybe he thought it would be appropriate for her to experience the same. So of Marianne's 13 children, only two survived. Margaret Edith, who lived, who died in 1950 and her son from the marriage to James Robertson. So this is the end of the video. Like, comment and subscribe or watch another video if you would like. Bye bye.